have learnt in previous classes that energy is the capacity to do work. Energy can take various forms. Heat is one of the forms of energy. Different types of energy change into heat. When you rub your hands, they become warm because friction generates heat. When you run or do any other strenuous exercise, heat is generated in your body and you start sweating. Burning of fuels also generates heat. In a water heater, electricity is used to heat up water. Hence, we can see that heat or thermal energy can be produced from different types of energy and it can transform into other types of energy too. At a smaller level, thermal energy is stored in particles of matter. A smaller object will have less heat than a larger object. How is heat measured? Heat is detected by temperature. A cup of tea just made is called hot and it has high temperature. However, water taken from a refrigerator is called cold and it has low temperature. We can define temperature as the degree of hotness or coldness of a body. We can feel the sensation of hot or cold on touching an object. Ice feels cold but a cup of coffee feels hot but sometimes our senses fool us. Heat always flows from a body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. Units of Heat Heat is measured in units like Joule and Calorie. SI unit of heat is Joule, J. Heat also determines how fast the particles of matter move. The particles in a hot object move faster than the particles in a cold object. Due to faster motion, the particles collide more with their neighboring particles and transfer energy faster. Temperature measured The hotness and coldness of a body can be sensed by touch. However, touching cannot give us a value of temperature. To measure temperature, we need a scale which can measure the degree of hotness of a body as compared to a chosen standard value. Such scales were developed by taking freezing point and boiling point of water as standard values. Scientists have developed three scales of temperature. 1. Celsius scale. 2. Fahrenheit scale. 3. Kelvin scale. Celsius scale. This is the most commonly used scale of temperature. In this scale, the freezing point of water is taken as 0 and boiling point of water as 100 and the in-between range is divided into 100 equal divisions or units. Each of these units is called a degree. The temperature in Celsius scale is denoted by degree C. Degree Celsius, hence, freezing point of water is equal to 0 degree C. Boiling point of water is equal to 100 degree Celsius. One division is equal to 1 degree Celsius. Fahrenheit scale. In this scale, the freezing point of water is taken as 32 degree Fahrenheit and boiling point is fixed at 212 degree Fahrenheit and the range is divided into 180 equal divisions. Can you now work out a relation between Celsius and Fahrenheit scale? The Celsius and Fahrenheit scale meet at minus 40 degree. This means minus 40 degree Celsius is equal to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. Kelvin scale Kelvin scale is most commonly used in scientific calculations. In this scale, freezing point of water is 273.15 K and boiling point is 373.15 K. And between the two temperatures, there are 100 equal divisions. Thus, one division in Celsius scale is equal to one division in Kelvin scale. By a thermometer. A thermometer is a device which detects the change in temperature of an object. It works on the principle that liquids expand on heating. When a liquid is heated, its particles move faster and spread out over a large area. This is called expansion. When a liquid is cooled, its particles slow down and come closer. Hence, its volume decreases. This is called contraction. In the beginning, alcohol was used as the liquid in thermometers. Nowadays, it is replaced by mercury. When the bulb of the thermometer comes into contact with an object at higher temperature, the liquid in the bulb expands and rises up in the capillary. 
the level of the liquid is read on the scale and it gives the temperature reading. The laboratory thermometer. The thermometers used in laboratory are filled with either alcohol or mercury. The range of a common mercury laboratory thermometer varies from minus 25 degrees Celsius to 350 degrees Celsius. While using the thermometer, its bulb should be dipped completely into the liquid. When you use a thermometer in the lab, be careful about following. Never hold the thermometer from its bulb. Keep the thermometer vertical. Dip the bulb completely into the liquid whose temperature you are measuring. The bulb or the stem of the thermometer should not touch the walls or base of the container. Take the temperature reading without moving the thermometer out of the container. While noting the reading, your eyes should be at the same level as the mercury line. Take at least two readings to avoid inaccuracy. Before noting the readings, find the least count of the thermometer. Least count of a thermometer is the temperature reading represented by one division on its scale. You can calculate the least count of a thermometer in simple steps. Hold a thermometer and count the number of divisions between any two numbers on it. Divide the difference between the numbers by the number of divisions. For example, if there are 20 divisions between 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius, the least count will be 10 upon 20 equal to 0 0.5 degree. A body at higher temperature to a body at lower temperature. This transfer of heat takes place in three ways. These are conduction, convection and radiation. End of a metal spoon in hot water and hold the other end in your hand. What happens after a few seconds? The end of spoon in your hand also heats up. This happens because of conduction. The heat passes from hot water to the end of spoon dipped in it and from there to the end of spoon in your hand. Convection is based on the principle that hot particles of liquids and gases move faster and rise up, letting the cooler particles to move down towards a source of heat. This causes motion of molecules in a particular direction, which is called convection current. Warm. The energy of the sun reaches us in the form of waves. These waves are absorbed by all matter. The heat energy from the sun is transferred by a type of waves called infrared waves. When a body absorbs infrared waves, it heats up. This type of transfer of energy is called radiation. Unlike conduction and convection, radiation does not need a substance or particles to transfer energy. Radiations can travel through vacuum. In other words, conduction and convection need a medium to transfer heat, but radiation does not need a medium to travel. Understand that the sun is not the only body to give out heat energy in the form of radiations. All hot bodies give out infrared radiations. To absorb heat energy, they start moving faster. When they move fast, they spread out. This increases the space between particles, thus increasing their volume. This is called expansion. Expansion takes place in solids, liquids and gases. We can say that when an object gets heated, it expands and when it cools, it contracts. Expansion is minimum in solids and maximum in gases. Can you discuss why this is so?